Hello. Uh, how are you doing? It is the wee hours of the morning, Tuesday, June 2nd of the year 2020. <coughs> Excuse me, and I've wanted to record this video for a while. Uh, the title of the video. Well, it's going to be shortened. Uh, Worldwide Church of God, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Uh, my grandmother on my mother's side, she... Uh, I don't remember when she first heard uh, Herbert W. Armstrong on the radio. Uh, I don't know, maybe in the 40s. Or the 50s, I, I don't remember when. Well, didn't, I think Armstrong, uh, I think he started his church in the, in the 30s after the crash of 1929. But uh, anyway, I, I'm, I know I can easily get long-winded uh, in my videos and people probably lose interest in... Uh, in me talking, I don't talk very fast, but uh, yeah, my so my mother, I think it was in the 50s, she moved uh, from the town of Grand Meadow, Minnesota, up into the Twin Cities area, uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. She was in one of the suburbs, and uh, back then, uh, there was no actual church in the you know radio church of god turned into the worldwide church of god there was no actual church started in the tw twin cities area and um there were ministers sent out uh into minnesota to set up uh, church locations and uh some of them actually stayed stayed uh uh, at my grandmother's house up in the Twin Cities. And um, uh, of my grandmother's uh, six children, three of three of them, three of her daughters, uh, and over the years joined joined the Worldwide Church of God. I think my mom was the last. Might have been the last one because of uh, resistance from uh, my father, who was her husband at that time. But, um, yeah, my parents divorced in 1981. And, uh, and then after 1981, I was able to start attending, and I was just a teenager then. But uh, let me look at the look at my phone to make sure it is recording. Yep, it is. Uh, uh, welcome to my to my glorious pool barn storage. Um, I like to record these videos later at night, but where I live at home, there's this nice new young family living in the apartment above me. A couple that has, uh, I think they have four children and two little girls live in the bedroom right above mine and I don't want to wake them up at uh, two in the morning recording another YouTube video. Excuse me, got a little bit of gas there, but um, this is my opinion on my experience uh, in the Worldwide Church of God from 1981 uh, to about 1997. I, I was kind of, I think 97, I was kind of, I wasn't attending quite as much. And, uh, <clears throat> and the changes were confusing. And um, I don't know, I just, I just lost interest in, in that church. Uh, another thing was the particular church I was attending. 
in 19 <clears throat> in 1997 the single people weren't including me in their activities and uh, what a real shame you know they would plan things and usually not tell me about them so they didn't include me so I thought you know that's kind of rude that is rude but uh, anyway Uh, the good, the good about that church, Bible reading, Bible reading. Sometimes in the in the middle of a sermon, I I just I just latch on to a to a verse and I just start reading, 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 and just tune out from the sermon. Just tune out. I could really get really interested in it sometimes, and. Um, in that church, there was a lot of, well, oh, I sh this thing I'm sitting on is my Dixie Chopper Zero Turn writing mower. I picked it up for $100 complete in uh, April of 2018. And I prayed for this mower. Uh, I, I mow the grass on this property that I rent and uh, I have Lyme disease and I've experienced pain in my arms for years from Lyme disease and I had wanted to get a zero turn mower to use to mow to replace my garden tractors because a zero turn it's easier than you know turning a steering wheel and I got this thing complete uh, for $100 not running uh, I unloaded it in here, and I haven't tinkered with it yet. I'm hoping to get it running, but I'm sure people are looking and saying, what is he sitting on? But, yeah, it's my $100 Dixie Chopper zero-turn mower. And, wow, I'm, y I'm yakking seven minutes already. But uh, the Bible reading, uh, a lot of nice, good, honest people who care about others. You know, uh, if I needed prayers for something if it was something big I'd go go to the minister and um, depending on what it was how big it was he would announce he would announce it to the um, to the church members or I could talk to other people I knew and say could you pray for this or pray that I get a job or or pray about this problem or that problem but don't tell anybody about that problem or this problem. Um, the church had activities for the adults and for the children. They had, um, there was various um, holy days throughout the year. Uh, the holy day I didn't like was uh, atonement in which you couldn't, you weren't supposed to eat for 24 hours, sundown to sundown, and I had great difficulty with that one. Uh, you know, only, only to learn in the last, oh, about 10 years, my many, many different health problems. I, I've had Lyme disease since the early 80s. Uh, I have... Um, food intolerances and then I have malabsorption so and that then I'm hypoglycemic so uh, going 24 hours without eating was just pure hell for me there were I think a few years before I stopped attending church that I just I'd leave church not tell anybody I'd stop somewhere right after church and eat or else go home and eat because I mean I was felt like it was about to die and uh, I, I really thought they should be more realistic to to some people with serious health problems and say okay yeah go ahead and eat just don't tell anybody or don't uh, talk openly in church about it but um, anyway and then uh, they had um, yeah you didn't um, you didn't work from sundown Friday night to sundown Saturday night and there was a lot of people in that church that lost jobs or 
uh, because they wouldn't uh, work Friday evening or, or work on the day and Saturday. Uh, there was a lot of people in that church that got fed up with that kind of thing and, and just uh, started their own business, you know, a painting business or or cleaning windows or carpentry or this or that or uh, one thing or another to support themselves and uh, I heard once in a while there'd be there would be church members that would sue an employer for firing them uh, because they couldn't work uh, on the Sabbath Friday night to set Friday night sundown to Saturday night sundown and I don't rem I don't know how many of those lawsuits uh, uh, resulted in the in the person getting their job back or getting or suing for money but uh, anyway uh, you didn't often find a bad egg in that church uh, a lot of good good honest people like I've said um, wasn't very often um, the bad the bad Legalism, legalism, rules, 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 and uh, what what a, several you know a lot of female members in the church had trouble with is the church kept flip flopping in the eighties about you know women can't wear makeup then they can and, and they can't and there were women that were kicked out of church for wearing makeup. And um, I don't know. I, I really don't know. But rules, rules. Um, sitting at church, uh, there, there were just too many sermons that were uh, guilt trips and fear. Um, once in a while, we'd, we would get taped sermons from uh, the headquarters in Pasadena, California. And I remember there was one, there was, there was, there was kind of, it was a guilt trip, guilt trip sermonette saying, uh, you know, if you're not perfect enough, you're not going to make it. This one guy talked about this row of trees were, that were planted along a house that he grew up in. And uh, about him returning back to this house as after he left, you know, went to school and went out on his own, returning back to his parents' house. And there was a few trees, few of these trees in this row that didn't make it. And he says, well, basically the sermon was, you know, uh, if you're not a perfect enough, good enough Christian, you're going to be like one of those trees that doesn't make it. And um, I remember reading a, a, a verse in the Bible in, I don't know, maybe 93 or 94, maybe, yeah, some one of those two years in which uh, God said, uh, uh, God doesn't lead people in fear. I I I know there there's I think there's multiple verses like that that God doesn't lead in fear. And um, hmm. there were uh, also there were two members in that church uh, that told me said to me Boyd if if you don't give in to to God fully he's gonna break you. And uh, I repeated that there's a, there's a forum. I, I don't know how many forums there are related to former members of the Worldwide Church of God, but I, I mentioned that on one forum that I'm on. <clears throat> and another, another person replied, uh, oh, oh, so was, um, what did he say? He said something about, he doesn't think that Jesus uh, ever did anything to beat people into submission. 
But um, I just, I didn't like hearing that from those two people. Um, I had, I had multiple traumas early in my life, uh, not related to my family. Um, pretty big, pretty big traumas. And uh, I've dealt with the issues of that. You know, I still deal with that. I'm in my early 50s now, and uh, there were, you know, there'd, there'd be sermons that were, you know, I'm just sitting there, and I'm being told in this sermon I'm doing something wrong, of course, you know, but I just, I get tired of it. I didn't hear very many positive sermons. I didn't hear very many encouraging sermons. Of course, God corrects people. Of course, every one of us is a sinner, but I just I just got tired of being told I'm doing something wrong. And that church really was steeped deep, deep, deeply in legalism. Legalism, rules, rules, rules. And... Um, but I remember just multiple sermons... I'd sit there and I'd, I'd, I would tune out. I'd be looking in another direction. And uh, I'm not going to say which church, I, which location of church I was going to, but uh, two different deacons on two different times. Um, no, more than two different times. I, I'd, they'd be, lo I'd get the stare. I'd get stare, the stare from deacons. In the middle of churches when I, or sermons when I tune tune out, I think it was more often the taped sermons I'd get the stare, and I think one of those, at least one of those times I had after church one of the deacons come over and and he'd be uh, he'd be he'd be prying into my mind you know boy you weren't paying attention, and just really laying it laying it thick on me about that and I really didn't like him doing that I'm I'm sorry I just you know another guilt trip sermon I have to sit and sit through and okay how long till this is over this you know that was before we had smartphones and stuff I could imagine you know ministers now with smartphones not letting people go on their smartphones during churches but um, in the church that I went to, most of the years I was in church, there was one one family uh, that we were close to where the, the husband was a deacon, and I don't remember getting any, any uh, guilt trip stares from him. Uh, got along with him well. Uh, a great, very, very smart man. But... Um, I got a list of notes right here. One of my cousins, uh, who he also left the church. I don't remember when he left. Maybe in the 90s or something. Uh, he he found his wife in the church, and they they both left. Uh, his mother left. Uh, my mother left. I have one relative that was in and then has gone from one offshoot to another to another. I don't know how many times he's skipped from one offshoot church to another. But uh, my one cousin, him and I have had a few conversations about this. And he, he noted how many very, very judgmental people were in that church. And that was one thing that very much irritated him and had irritated me a lot too. But um you know, there 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 were plenty of sermons, you know, I'd be sitting there and they'd go from one Bible verse to another to another. I mean, you know, a one or two verses and jump to a different, totally different part of the part of the Bible and they'd put all these different verses together and I'd get lost and I couldn't understand it 
And I think I think sometimes there there was sermons where they were just uh, patching together uh, Bible verses to get the meaning they were looking for. I think there was times they were taking uh, Bible verses out of context, and I had trouble following it. I almost all the time had trouble following it, and then people would say, "Well, well, you don't have enough of the Holy Spirit to follow that." And I just, I'm sorry, I just couldn't follow. I just couldn't follow a lot of that stuff. But. Um, Looking at notes. Um, the leader of that church, he died, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I think he died, it was January of 1986 or 1987. information has come out well since we have the internet now and and former members of this church we can talk to each other if we're on the same forums there's some information I learned in the last year about that former leader uh, that you would have to go look up uh, in the online documents related to why his one wife divorced him there's something just really 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 unbelievably shocking uh, that he did earlier in his life and uh, I know he's dead he's been dead a long time but uh, I don't want to risk getting sued for repeating that but uh, there's a there's a on uh, Facebook there's a guy with the last name of Armstrong, that he says he's the the uh, the grandson of of that le the leader, and he said uh, uh, he repeated to us on this one Facebook forum that uh, uh, that leader he was just in it for the money, and um, there was other there's other things that people that had gone to Ambassador College. Or worked under the that the leader of that church and uh, noticed things in his character that didn't follow what um, he said in sermons or that he said the ways that he thought we should live our lives and that and uh, you know he did live well, I think he lived into his 90s I think he was in his 90s when he died. I think he was born in the late 1800s, but um, I don't know. I repeated that information about why his one wife divorced him to my mom, and I thought my mom would be pretty shocked, and she really wasn't. She, I don't remember, she left Worldwide uh, Church of God, I don't know, how many years after I did the membership had had dwindled in the late 90s after a lot of people left for multiple various offshoot churches and um and my mom now attends a baptist church but um hmm. another thing in that church is we were repeatedly told um if you leave, you can't come back. And know what happened? There were people that left that came back. Uh, another thing is they would tell us, well, this is the only true church. This is the only church with the Holy Spirit, which is baloney. Uh, that's baloney. There are other churches out there with the Holy Spirit. I'm sure it varies from one church to another. Um, my mom said that they, it was a church, they were kind of like halfway, they hadn't fully transitioned into, into the beliefs of the New Testament. And, um, the minister that, uh, 
the minister that was in the church that I started attending in 1981, um, uh, John Bald, he once said uh, about the New Testament, there's st some stuff in here, you know, meaning the New Testament, that we don't believe. He says, we are an Old Testament church, which I was, I was a bit shocked to hear that. But, um, yeah. Okay, the ugly. Well, I already got into the ugly about uh, why the leader, why the, Leader, why has one f wife divorced him? Um, more of the ugly is uh, when the, the, the breakup of the church started in the mid 90s, there was uh, these, mo there was one offshoot and then there was another offshoot. Well, you know, there was offshoots that had been coming off of the Worldwide Church of God from I don't know when. There might have been offshoots that came off of that church in the 50s, for all I know. I remember um, someone signed up my mom and I for a newsletter in the middle 90s. This newsletter was about... All it talked about was the various offshoot churches of the Worldwide Church of God. And as this newsletter was critical of the Worldwide Church of God. But I remember one of these newsletters said that there was like 500 plus different offshoot churches from the Worldwide Church of God. But, uh, yeah, the, the changes started, I don't know, 95. They started trickling out from Pasadena in 95 or 96. But, um, and there were um, a lot of churches that um, continued on with the old beliefs of the, of the previous Worldwide Church of God. Uh, the world. I don't know what year the Worldwide Church of God uh, changed their name to uh, what Grace Communion International. It's a very, very different church now. I never attended it. I, I've looked it up. Uh, they celebrate Christmas. Uh, they go to church on Sunday instead of Saturday. Uh, it's uh, very much uh, more a mainstream church, uh, very different than what the Worldwide Church of God was. But um, I, I'm, I think the worst part of all of it was these new offshoot churches when they were forming and breaking off from the Worldwide Church of God in 95, 96, 97. They were telling members to disassociate with people who stayed in the Worldwide Church of God, including family members, close friends, and um, uh, the, the, the church I went to back in the 80s, the location of the church I went to back in the 80s, uh, this one family, they had two daughters, uh, two pretty daughters, uh, no sons. And uh, I think I went to prom, or no, I think it was homecoming with one of the daughters. I can't remember if I went to something else with the other daughter or not. But the younger daughter, uh, well, she got married, I don't know how many years ago. And um, I don't, I think she might have left uh, Worldwide Church of God in the 90s. And I think her, her sister and parents went uh, with one of the offshoots. And, um, and then they completely disassociated with her over like 
11, 12 years ago uh, that when she tried to contact them just in the last uh, few years and um, uh, the response that she got back from her sister and parents was through an attorney. And this attorney said to her to never contact them again in any way, shape, or form because she didn't go with the church that they split off with. And uh, this gal, uh, she uh, hears through relatives, other relatives, she hears things about her parents and her sister. But she literally has had no contact with her sister and her parents for 11, 12 years, something like that. And that's just one example, one example. I, I heard many stories of other, I, I, I think uh, the, the splitting of the church even ended up in some couples divorcing because one member would go with one of the offshoots and one would go with a different offshoot or one would stay with Worldwide Church of God and the other wouldn't, or one just got fed up and just stopped going to church. But yeah, I left uh, yeah, about 97, 1997. And uh, I just lost interest in it. I uh, attended a, um, a Baptist church several times, not too far from where I live. It's not in the town that I live in, but it's not too far. And uh, I remember uh, going, and there wasn't a lot of people there. And then I talked to the minister about counseling, and he just kind of, you know, he says, oh, we, oh, I don't do counseling. But um, I don't know. There's religious um, magazines. I think maybe one of them is Religion Today, and... But there's, uh, um, there's been some articles in some of the religious magazines about the big, big changes that happened in the Worldwide Church of God in the, in the middle to late 90s. And basically, basically it was, it was uh, leading, leading in, the, in the direction of being cultish. You know, when, when you think of the word cult, you think of... Uh, you know, sacrificing animals and weird stuff like that. Well, none of that happened. None of that happened in the Worldwide Church of God, but just cultish in the way it was uh, controlling. You know, sometimes you felt like you, you had to ask the minister just to get permission. You know, can I buy this car? Can I buy that car? Can I do this? Can I buy this house? And... um which is which is really religious, you know. People need to be able to think for themselves. Uh, I, I'm still religious. Uh, I don't pray every day. You know, I pray several times a week. You know, I, I prayed for this. Prayed for this zero turn mower here. I do remember. Uh, I think it was the day after. My sophomore or junior year in school I ran out of uh, the back of the house that I lived in with my mom and my brother and uh, there was a, a cement you know big cement slab and I ran down the steps and I, I turned my left foot here and I felt a snap uh, well, the reason I had ran out the back of the house is, is there was there was a highway down behind the house that we lived in, and I had just heard a crash, and uh, um, and um, we ended up. I was alone at home, and um, when my mom got home later, we called up the one. Uh, 
member of church. He, he was a doctor. And um, went over and he looked at my foot and, you know, he was, he was, his specialty was in bones and joints. And he looked at my foot and he says, I'm pretty sure you have a broken bone in your foot. And then, uh, so my mom brought me to the emergency room uh, that was in the town, that, city that we were living in. And, and uh, the emergency room was... Um, I think it was fairly new, fairly new at that time. But anyway, it was pretty busy at the time that we went in, and um, and uh, we were waiting and waiting and waiting for me to be seen. And my mom stopped and called one of the deacons in church and at his house and at that time he had a, a high-ranked minister staying at his house and she asked for prayers for my foot because uh, you know I mowed lawns in the summertime to bring in a little bit of money because we lived in the city and um, uh, They they prayed and I, I think my mom prayed and other people prayed and um, the doctors talked to me and I said no I've I've never broken anything in this this foot at all before and and then by the time they X-rayed my my foot they got a picture of one there was one bone in my left foot that had broken and healed and. Uh, so God uh, healed a broken bone in my left foot in a matter of, I don't know, minutes or an hour. That's a miracle. You know, normally, you know, I, without it healing, I would have had my left foot in a cast for, I don't know, two, three, four weeks and wouldn't have been able to mow the lawns. Once in a while, it's been a while since it's happened, but I remember I'd uh, be walking, you know, after it, this all happened and it healed miraculously I'd be walking along and I feel a little kind of snap so maybe the bone broke healed a little bit crooked or something but you know God's spirit was working in that church in some ways yeah, but I, I, I think uh, I think Satan had his influence in there too uh, I'm sure Satan tries to negatively influence any 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 church or any religion that that uh, that he can. Of course, we're all, all humans and we have human nature. But um, yeah, I I just uh, I have uh, one relative uh, that I have uh, that is in one of the offshoot churches of the worldwide church of God has multiple times invited me, uh, to go to the church that he goes to. And, and I have no interest in attending any church that is anything like the worldwide church of God with, with rules and rules and rules and rules and rules and legalism and, and all of that. Um, you know, I, I, I deliver pizza, you know, if I told a, a, if I went to a pizza place and said, well, I can't work past sundown Friday night or before sundown Saturday night, they did, they just, you know, look at me and says, well, well, we can't hire you then. You know, you work for a pizza place, uh, uh Friday night, Saturday night, those are the biggest nights of the week. And, um. With my many health problems, pizza delivery is the only type of job I've found that works with me. And I honestly don't know what else I could do. Uh, I've had Lyme disease about 37 years, give or take a year or two. And, you know, I, I, have, uh, I, I can't work a job where I'm standing all the time because my back starts hurting. My back, my knees, uh, my joints, my feet just start hurting a lot standing in place. But, um, oh, I forgot about tithes. Tithes. 
there was first tithe, then there was second tithe, which is was not biblical. The second tithe, um, or wait, was the second tithe? No, the third tithe. They would have third tithe years. A tithe is you know ten percent of your uh, gross income. And uh, I remember, you know, working a minimum wage job at a Dairy Queen. And I had my Mustang, which needed some repairs. And uh, I was in a third tithe year. And I had to go to the minister and counsel with him and get permission not to be, uh, um, uh, have to have the burden of paying third tithes and he finally relented and said yeah but there was uh, another minister that replaced him later on uh, yeah back in the early to mid 90s uh, yeah I think what about 94 I had first first ties I was living alone in, in a small apartment and uh, I was getting to the point where I was running out of money. And I, I had, I think, about 1200 bucks or so in a, in a checking account for first ties. And I had to use it. I had to use that money either, you know, to buy food for myself, uh, pay for my rent. Otherwise, I was going to be homeless. I wouldn't have had an apartment, uh, you know. Uh, my brother, uh, he was newly married. I, I doubt that he would have was about to let me move in with him and his wife. But um, I just had the choice of either, um, you know, being able to eat and pay my bills and have a roof over my head, and I had to use that money. And after a while, you know, the, the, the headquarters in Pasadena, uh, they send out uh, reports of um, tithes paid into the church, into headquarters, to the ministers. And the minister, I don't know how, how, how long it was before he uh, talked to me, and he says, uh, Boyd, uh, headquarters says, you haven't paid any tithes in in about six months. And I says, uh, I, I had to use it to uh, feed myself and pay bills and have a roof over my head. And uh, he threatened to uh, kick me out of the church. And uh, I said to him something about, is that what Jesus would have done? Is that, is that the main reason why, I, why I'm here is to pay money in, into the church? And I really questioned uh, his uh, what he said, and he relented and didn't kick me out of the church. But um, from what I've read from other members, that other former members, uh, money was a big focus on that church. Uh, this guy that said uh, he's um, Herbert Armstrong's grandson, he said. One year in the middle 70s, and it might have been 1975, he says that that church uh, brought in $250 million of income. That's a lot of money. Quarter of, quarter of a billion dollars in one year. But uh, I don't know. If I could go back in time... And uh, try and do it over again, not to attend that church. Well, I was, I was a teenager. It was, it was pretty much, you know, after my parents divorced. You know, I lived with my mom. It pretty much was uh, something we're gonna do. You're gonna go to church with us. But uh, I just the 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 guilt trips. You know, the fear, the guilt trips, and, well, oh, I forgot to, I forgot to include in my notes, what, 1981, when I, when I started going with my mom, 
there was already, yeah, there was sermons, there were taped sermons from headquarters talking about, you know, the end time is really, really close. You know, we might be fleeing to the place of safety in 1982 or 1983. The, 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 the big year prior to that, that that church thought they were going to flee to a place of safety was, I think, 1972. Back then, there was people that were, you know, quitting their jobs, cashing in their investments, selling their houses, selling their cars, everything, and uh, getting ready to go. And because, well, yeah, Jesus is about to return. It's going to happen any day now. And uh, and then, you know, and then along with that, there was the thing of, well, if you're, if you're not the good, the, a good enough Christian, you're not going to be called to this place of safety. They, they talked about, you know, people still being on earth, fleeing to some, some place on earth where the church would be protected from uh, the wrath of Satan as the, the world just falls apart uh, in, the la in the three and a half years prior to Jesus returning. And, but uh, I, I, was, I, I had this so, so much fear related to this. I'd, I'd get home uh, from school and uh, nobody else would be home and I, I would panic and I'd panic and I, I really honestly thought okay uh, did did my family did my mother and my brother just uh, did they get called to flee to this place of safety and I'm all I'm here left alone you know what 14 years old what am I gonna do uh, you know, am I am I going to have to live through the tribulation? And oh boy, there was a lot of guilt, just a lot of guilt and fear uh, with that church, which really was not healthy. There's one of the forums that I'm on uh, for former members of the Worldwide Church of God. There's there's people. They go into forums and and they, uh, it's kind of their sanctuary. Uh, to tell the bad stories, the regrets of being raised in that church or born into the church or attending for five years and and still having the the guilt trips and the fear and all that. And um, lot there's lots of people. In this one forum that um, that I go on, there's lots of people in that forum that think it was a big mistake being part of that church. That it was actually in in some ways a trauma to them, especially as children, you know, children or teenagers. And there was some, you know, really, really, really heavy, scary. Uh, subjects that they would get into and uh, but you know uh, you know in revelations in, in the back in the very the very last chapter in the Bible you know it describes uh, fire falling from heaven and stuff and um, I have a theory on that one my theory is that it's planet X and that there's a, a, a trail of uh, comets that follow planet X. Planet X has in a, a very in a, a very, very, very elliptical orbit that's about 3,500 years. And uh, the theory with planet X is it as it makes its pass to pass around the moon, that the Earth could pass, through the path of planet X's uh, <clears throat> comets up to four times. 
Well, on that's what I'm thinking, you know, the fire falling from heaven. But <clears throat> yeah, I remember one of the verses said, uh, <clears throat> "And no stone on earth shall be un shall not be overturned." So the whole earth will be shaken. You know, earthquakes, volcanoes. You know, maybe maybe Yellowstone will go off, or maybe Yellowstone will go off before that because. The sun will be darkened, you know, Yellowstone or one of the other big volcanoes. But I want to be gone. I just would rather be dead before all that happens. But, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of uh, mainstream churches that talk about uh, the rapture being raptured up into heaven or, or somewhere, somewhere safe. Uh, when all hell breaks loose, but uh, I don't know. Well, I have uh, yacked on for uh, 51 minutes. It's about all I can think. I'm sorry the video is so long. I thank you if, if you have uh, stuck with the video this long. Um, I do on my YouTube channel. I have comments for all of my videos. Uh, if I get too many comments for this video that are negative or too much of a pain to manage, um, I might just turn off the comments section for this video. But, uh, well, if, if you were a member of the Worldwide Church of God uh, and or one of the offshoot churches, uh, I, I, I hope you find healing. Uh, if you you know, left one of them. I hope you find healing, uh, escaping away from the guilt trips and the fear and the controlling and the negative and negative and negative. Uh, I just, it. I don't think it was a healthy, a healthy place to go. And um, I don't, I don't think uh, Jesus would have, uh, would have ran a church like the Worldwide Church of God. You know, Jesus talks about, uh, you know, he died for our sins. And um, I remember one, one member of the first location of that church I went to, she was an older lady, really nice lady. Uh, and she... She's, she could sing really well, and but her husband, he went to a different church. He went to one of the mainstream churches, but he was a really nice guy. And he would sometimes come to church with his wife. And he once said to me, he says, you know, in this church, I don't hear them talking about Jesus very often. And I thought that was quite interesting, him saying that to me. But, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I just really thought it was very, very unhealthy. Very unhealthy how much fear and guilt and guilt and guilt trips and you're not going to make it to the place of safety. You're not going to live in uh, the time that comes after uh after Jesus returns, just, yeah, just lots of fear, lots of negativity, lots of uh, controlling, just wasn't healthy. Anyway, I thank you for listening to my very, very long video on my opinion and my experience with the Worldwide Church of God and, um, you can check out my other videos. I talk about a lot of other things my other videos. I have th over 300 videos here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. See ya. Bye.